glad in it. I'm delighted to greet you on this Friday in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, who is worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. God's name is worthy to be praised. TGIF, thank God it's Friday. Can you believe that we're at the ninth day of the seventh month of the year? We give God praise, honor, and glory. Let me just wait for some of you to please come on. Please come on. Pastor's here. It's a few minutes late checking in, but I'm here. I'm looking for you, you, and you. Um, good afternoon, Sister Cora Powell. How are you? Um, please come on. Please come on, Sister Ramsey. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see all of you. All right, I have some sad news um, that I need to share with you. Sister Sharon Carter, how are you? Sister Valerie Ellis, how are you on the eve of your birthday, which is tomorrow? So happy birthday in advance to you. Okay, so let me just um, share some information with you um, that has come to me. One of our good members, an older member, not an older member, really a sort of new member. Um, I just learned last night that she transitioned, Sister Leola Rutledge. Some of you may have known her. She actually worked with me in our after school program. She transitioned. I talked to her sister. I was so sad to hear. And that service is going to be on um, July the 14th, Wednesday, July the 14th. I want us to pray for the family. Um, as I have more details in terms of viewing and all of that, I'll let you know. But um, let's keep the family in prayer. Her name is Sister Leola Rutledge. Um, I don't think she had any children. I talked to her sister on, on last night. The other thing I want to bring to your attention um, and ask you to be concerned and to pray, um, let me see if I can find it here, is that one of our good, good members, Sister Helena Atkinson, who's so very, very um, faithful in our church, she was so faithful to her mom, her mom's sister, Inez Maud Atkinson. She transitioned, and that service is going to be on Friday, um, July the 16th. Um, the viewing will be um, on, on Friday, July the 16th from 4 to 7 p.m., and the service will be on Friday morning. Um, again, um, please call the church or reach out to me for further details as soon as I have um, all of those details, I certainly will um, share them with you. All right. Um, again, let me invite you to please join us for our worship experience on this coming Sunday. On this coming Sunday, I hope that you will join us for our worship experience, which commences at 1045. And as you know, we don't keep you long. We'll have you out by noon, not later than 1215. But the Bible says, that um, forget not to assemble yourselves together and so much more as you see the day approaching. So you know that we have in-person services with social distancing. We are going to be looking at the data to see how we can relax some of the rules, but we still want to make sure that people are as safe as possible. So we haven't done that as yet, but please come if you can. We'd be delighted to have you. If not, then certainly feel free to join us for our virtual services. You can find us on our Facebook page or you can find us on our YouTube page. So thank you so very, very much. Again, also um, plan to join us for our Bible study, which is on Wednesday at seven o'clock. All right, so thank you so very, very much. Let's get ready to move to the word. Well, let me just say hello to some of you that I have not seen yet. Um, Leroy, thank you, always good to see you. Joan, how are you? Um, good to see you, Sister Ann Hamid. Brenda, how are you? Virginia Channer, thank you so much. Um, Sister Mary Lawrence, Sister Marva Harding. Joseph, how are you? Joseph Carey, Sister Hazel Best. Richard Fagan, good to see you. Sister Jacqueline Wallace, good to see all of you. Thank you so much for joining us. Reach out to somebody, let them know that pastor is here. And we're going to move straight to the word. We continue to, to talk out of Second Peter. On yesterday, I had you to um, or share with you rather that the God that we serve is a God of compassion. He is a God that cares and he reminds us that we are somebody. He reminds us, um, he says, that you um, are 
the living stone of God, that we are of a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that God may declare the praise of him who has called us out of darkness into the marvelous light that we have received grace and mercy from our God. Somebody give God praise, honor, and glory. And he challenges us, he says in that um, second chapter, therefore, how do you act as a Christian? He says, rid yourself of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy and envy and slander of every kind, like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that we might grow up in the way that God would have us to. And that's why we join together to study out of God's word because the grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Let's move forward now. We're at verse 11 and now Paul shifts to a new idea. And he wants us to know that, listen, this world is not our home. We are just strangers passing through this world. And so all of us have a date, believe it or not, with this destiny called death. And it's not so matter, I'm not trying to scare anybody, but the reality is that we've got to make each day count. Each day count. That's why the psalmist says, Lord, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. And so the apostle Peter, early bishop in the church, and really upon that rock, the church stands, not upon Peter, but upon the faith that Peter has. And Peter's considered to be the first pope of the church. And of course, we pray for Pope Francis, who just had surgery, has come out successfully, 84 years old, but he is the pope of the Catholic church. And he follows in the apostolic tradition under the um, apostle or Pope Peter. And so Peter writes to the church, to the early church and to us by extension. He says, dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world to abstain from sinful desires which war against your souls. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. In other words, um, the uh, Pope Peter or the Apostle Peter says that we are just aliens. We're just strangers in this world that God allows us, as Shakespeare says, to come on the stage of life and do our thing. And then in God's own time, he calls us out into eternal life. And so while we're here, let's do the best we can. And so um, again, the Apostle Peter says, what you do, he says, is number one, abstain, he says, from sinful desires. Abstain from doing those things that are not like unto God. Abstain from being angry with your brothers and your sisters. The Bible says, how can you say you love God whom you've never seen and mistreat your brothers and sisters whom you see every day? Abstain um, from casting stones and judgment against your brothers and sisters. And even when people treat you wrong, still try to let your light so shine that men might see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. In other words, let me bring this down to what happens today. For example, um, you're in a parking spot and you got there first. And then somebody says, well, that was their spot. They want that spot. Don't get into a whole big argument about it. I remember um, during the Christmas holidays, I was in um, Costco's and there was a lady who was trying to get into a parking space, but I did not see her. So I pulled into the space. When she pulled up, she helped, had me to understand that she, that space was hers, that she had seen it first and she was trying to get in the space. Well, I could have just stayed in the space because I was there. What I did was I pulled my car out of the space, said, ma'am, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to try to take your space and go ahead and let her have the space. Let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. So he says, live such good lives among the pagans, those who don't know you. And though they accuse you of doing the wrong thing, you know that you've done the right thing. 
And so continue so that they can see your good deeds. Not for your glorification, but that God might get the glory. Secondly, he reminds us, now it is true that the slave masters use this passage to hold us in bondage. But what the apostle Peter is talking about is submitting oneself to the authority of those people who are godly leaders. They don't have the right to oppress you and suppress you and be racist towards you. But he says, submit yourselves for the Lord's, for the Lord's sake to every authority instituted among you, whether to the king as the supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. For it is God's will by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish men. Live as free men, but do not use your freedom as a cover up for evil. Live as servants of God, show proper respect to everyone, love the brotherhood of believers, fear God, honor the king. In other words, Jesus put it this way, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and render unto God the things that are God's. So that if you work on a company and you have a manager and he suggests or tells you to do certain things, then understand that you are there to do that responsibility. You wanna respect him in his position of authority. That is what um, um, the Apostle Peter is saying. And by so doing so, you allow your light to so shine that people can see God in you. There's some people who will not listen to anybody who want to have no respect for authority whatsoever. Even in your household, your children have to understand that you are the authority in that household. And they should respect you as such, whether they agree with you or not. And for the most part, you're only trying to share with them things that you know are for their well-being. And so that is what um, the Apostle Peter is saying. Now, what the um, slave owners did was they took things out of context when you get to verse um, 18, which I was not going to read it, but I am going to go there because it's my job to preach and to teach. And so take this teaching moment. He says, slaves, submit yourselves to your masters with all respect, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also those who are harsh. For it is commendable if a man bears up under the pain and unjust suffering because he is conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. Now, the slave owners use this to keep us under suppression. And let me put this in some kind of context. What the apostle is saying is that sometimes when people chastise you, it is for your good and not um, to oppress you. And we know when we look at the story of Philemon, um, that's found, there's one book in the Bible titled Philemon, and Onesimus says, um, 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 Paul rather writes to Onesimus and says that when um, Philemon, I mean, when, um, I'm, I'm sorry, it is, it, is, it is Paul who writes to Philemon and says that um, I'm going to send Onesimus to you. He is a slave, but I want you to treat him as a free person. And so the Bible never condones slavery in the terms of the opposition that we in fact had. And our forefathers and mothers had so much faith in God that they would sing, before I'll be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home and live with the Lord. But at the same time, we do have a responsibility to be subject to godly authority that is directing us in a path that is for our own good as we in fact listen to the power of the Holy Spirit. And so that is what I wanted to share with you today. And we'll continue um, on Monday. We'll take a break here, but I just want to say that um, understand this, that at the end of the day, 
you and I, we are just strangers passing through this world. This world is not our home, but while we're here, let's let our light so shine that men and women, boys and girls might see our good works and glorify our Father, which is in heaven. Um, I see a message from a Victoria Miller. I will need you to call the church. Um, you need to speak to um, someone on my staff or speak to me directly. Um, I'll give you our number publicly here since I see that you um, seem to have a need, um, but I will not address that in this forum. You can call my office at 718-287-1783. Well, know that God loves you and so do I. Listen, I don't know what you're going through, but whatever you're going through, please know that there's nothing that can happen to you that you together with God cannot handle. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, for this time together, we give you thanks and for your word that's so pregnant with truth and power that gives birth while we yet try to understand it. Thank you because you woke us up this morning. You started us on our way. You gave us another chance. Help us to take this gift that is called the present as a gift from you. And as a result of it, as a consequence of this gift that you've given us in this day, let us let our light so shine that people might see our good works and you alone might get the glory. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We adore you. We magnify you and we give you glory. We thank you. We thank you for your word that's so pregnant with truth and power that gives birth while we yet try to understand it. Oh, God bless each person under the sound of my voice. Pray for those that are bereft of spirit as they have lost loved ones. But we hear um, the psalmist that helps us to know that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal, that weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Lord, we love you, we praise you, we adore you, and we give you glory because there is no God like our God. Hear our prayer now, incline your ears to us. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Tell a fellow, thank you for reaching out. Always so good to see you, our friends from South Africa. We thank God for this medium that allows us to connect with one another. We long to see you as Paul writes to the church at Rome, that we might be together and that we might be able to share the mutual faith that both you and I have in the Lord. And we certainly look to have that video chat with you guys real, real soon. Sister Deborah Dunham, how are you? Please know that you're in our prayers. Also, I want you to pray. Um, don't want to put it out there publicly because I don't know if she wants it out there. But one of our members is in the hospital. Um, I talked to her um, just on yesterday. So please pray for those that are in hospital, um, those that have problems that are too big for them. And, you know, in this season, pick up the phone, somebody that comes across your mind that you haven't talked to in a while, just pick them up and say, you know, child, I was thinking about you. God loves you. And so do I. Sometimes all we need is just to know that somebody cares in a tangible way. And we say that God cares. We know that God cares. But listen, understand this. And I'm done that God works through people, works through you and me. Um, because I used to hear the old preachers say, he has no hands but our hands, no feet but our feet. So the old preachers used to, the old saints in the church used to pray, Lord, go over there and bless sister so-and-so. Go over there, oh Lord, and, and bring that one a cup of water. No, God said, you go over there. You bring them a cup of water. You visit them. And that's what Jesus teaches when he feeds the 5,000. He says, um, they said, Lord, these people are hungry. The disciples says, well, send them away. She said, no, you give them something to eat. You and I have a responsibility to share God's love in a tangible way. Well, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Let's be seeing the benediction. I look for you on Sunday and we'll gather together and we'll declare fresh and anew that this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Have a wonderful Sabbath on tomorrow. And then let's gather together on Sunday. Give God praise, honor, and glory. You continue to pray for me and I will pray for you. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance, grant his peace and his love. And you're going in and then you're going out and you're down sitting and you're rising till we shall stand in his presence through Jesus the Christ, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. Remember, God loves you and so do I.